Welcome to the Scaling Japan podcast, a podcast about how to grow your business from one hundred thousand dollars and beyond. And beyond in the land of the rising sun. Welcome to the Scaling Japan podcast. I'm your host Tyson Batino, and on today's episode, we have Auntie Sonyanen. He is the main organizer of Takeoff Tokyo. The place for internationally ambitious entrepreneurs. Originally from Finland, Antti came to Japan ten years ago, first bringing the Angry Birds franchise game here as the company's first country director. Additionally, he has worked on several projects bridging the tech communities of Japan and the rest of the world. Most notably, as co-founder and CEO of Slush Tokyo, which is a huge event. And I'm also a huge fan of Takeoff Tokyo, but it's great to have you on the podcast. And could you please introduce yourself, Auntie? Yeah,、uh, thanks for having me, Tyson.、Um, so yeah, my name is Auntie.、Uh, originally from Finland, I've been here in Japan for a while, as as you introduced. Yeah, I originally studied a bit of Japanese, and uh, and uh, when first job after after graduation,、um, I joined this. Angry Birds game company, and、uh, it was、uh, growing. It was、uh, going places, and suddenly we were expanding to different countries, and、uh, that brought me to here uh, with uh, with uh, with work. And、uh, <clears throat> I got to know the Japanese tech ecosystem through that time, and uh, and uh, yeah, I I saw that.、Uh, One thing that stood out, especially in the game industry of, of 2013, when I came, was that it was、uh, quite notably divided between the Japanese and the international audience,、mm. and、uh, became like a theme that I, I continued working on uh, uh, later, even though outside the game industry, or let's say also on other non-game projects as, as well. But、uh, yeah, that's me.、Uh, happy to be on the podcast. So I didn't introduce the, the topic, listeners, but、uh, today we're gonna dive into、uh, startup events in Japan, and、uh, probably few people could speak on the topic as much as Auntie. So we got the man here. So look forward forward to dive into it. But、uh, yeah, I also want to give you a chance before we dive in, if you could introduce Takeoff Tokyo. So、uh, Takeoff Tokyo, we started that、uh, this spring.、Um, We're building a place for internationally ambitious founders. There's six trillion dollar companies in the world. Five of them are in the U.S. One is in Saudi Arabia, and、uh, if you look at the top、uh, market cap companies in the world, they're mostly software. So, 35 years ago,、uh, that wasn't the case. It was mostly manufacturing companies. It was a lot of banks, and it, the list hold、uh, looked totally different. But now, software eats the world. And uh, also, um, <clears throat> uh, in that era, for example, when it was full of a lot of hardware companies, you had、uh, names like Sony, Nintendo, Toyota, a lot of like household names. From Japan, and actually, like half of the top companies in the world uh, were uh, Japanese. And, I think、uh, in the eighties or something like that, or eighties. Yeah, or that was eighty nine. Eighty nine, fifty percent of the top fifty companies were Japanese.、Uh, fast forward to twenty twenty three, only Toyota is left in that top fifty, and it's、uh, it has dropped from、uh, position number eleven to position number forty five. So. Um, the Japanese startup industry and, and ecosystem has come a long way. Founders raise ten times more fun,、uh, funding today than they、uh, raised ten years ago when I came to Japan. So obviously, startups have become more major. If you take a taxi in Tokyo or many other cities, like、uh, you can't avoid seeing like B two B SaaS startup commercials on on that little small screen in <laughs> in front of you.、Uh, <clears throat> Prime Minister Kishida's cabinet has their Inside Meti, there is a startup minister. So,、uh, also like、uh, all all different local governments have become、uh, very active in startups. To the point, it used to be so that it was unique if a local government was doing something in startups.、Um, <clears throat> um, but it's now so commonplace. Every every、uh, local government seems to be doing. It's almost like kind of embarrassing if <laughs>、uh, government.、Yeah. 
doing it. So it became went from being something uh, special to being like uh, like a standard kind of a thing. So why is then like uh, what what why is there a mismatch between like so much more activity happening uh, uh, domestically, but the global numbers going down? And the answer is that if you're riding a domestic airplane uh, and look only the domestic data, it thinks that uh, things are going forward. So um, that's why um, what we're building with Takeoff Tokyo is the international terminal of startups. By building this kind of international terminal, I think it's possible to uh, build trillion dollar companies in Japan as well. And that's what we're working on. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, there's, let's say you would expect there to be more, uh, Japanese later stage companies, uh, trying to delve into, um, Western markets, but, uh, I think maybe more focused on Asia or Southeast Asia, I think some of the big ones, but still there could be a lot more, you know, CD stage companies, uh, trying to go overseas. So. Yes, yeah, awesome to see you guys trying to bridge the gap there. And I, I did attend last year. Uh, I, I was, uh, and thank you also for letting me, uh, what was it, inviting me to moderate uh, talk. So I ended up talking as probably as much as the person who I was interviewing, but because I had a lot of unique insights on the topic. But uh, yeah, the, the VIP party was. That was excellent as well. And I'll talk more about that later and uh, how to how to effectively utilize uh, attending a startup event. Can you give us maybe the general timeline of when's the next Take Off Tokyo event? We did the first one this June 8, 9, uh, June 8 and 9th. Um, we did it at Terada Warehouse uh, in Tennozo Aido in Tokyo. We got together around 800 people, uh, which was around 80 startups, 40 uh, investment funds, and um, we also had uh, uh, around uh, 100 uh, student volunteers building building the event. We had maybe a third of the participants were uh, from overseas, and uh, 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 and 70 percent were were uh, domestic Japanese. And uniquely, we organized the contents pretty much all in in English uh, because uh, uh, to to kind of synchronize or, or to fit the goal of, of like building a kind of um, world dominating companies. And we're now in the works uh, uh, of uh, launching the, the next one for next year. Um, depending on when this podcast comes out, I'll be uh, able to share the exact details, but we're, we're right about to release the, 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 the details uh, as we Good. speak, but it's, it's, Good. it's going to be spring, uh, spring 2024. Gotcha. Yeah, we'll coordinate with you, and uh, and a very high likelihood that I'll be flying down from Hokkaido to attend again, like I did last year. Thanks so much. Was happy to have you back. And I'll add one key point before we uh, jump into the mix of it. And I think the unique thing about Take Off Tokyo is the language is English, or everything's in English, right? Yeah. So. Um... The, the what we're going where we're going with that is that um, since um, we for example I went around uh, last year I was uh, um, talking to a lot of people when I was uh, well, like getting back to the to my normal rhythm after Corona I was talking had the time a lot of time to talk with people and uh, I asked them that what makes a trillion dollar company a lot of people uh, and why are they why don't those exist in in, in in Japan a lot of people would say that uh, to build a company of that level um, you need to dominate some sort of very new relevant niche uh, globally like all over the the planet basically like if you if you want to be a leading company in one category, you need to be serving the whole planet. There isn't like, if you look at native speakers, there isn't, um, maybe, I don't know the exact number, but I think there might be, there's probably like around a billion native speakers of uh, English. And, uh, but then there's a lot of people who can speak it as a second language. Uh, when you work with Japanese, there's 125 million native speakers and maybe a few million of non uh, native speakers. So like the max, uh, market size that that unlocks is just way bigger and uh personally been seeing like a lot of the 
community activity and, and what I've seen in Japan is that um, um, most of it is is like focused, of course, the large domestic market, and that's all good. But uh, since we have this unique theme of uh, building globally uh, relevant, globally leading companies, uh, I think that comes as a given. We have this interesting philosophy as well that we usually don't do much of simultaneous translation either, uh, which most other events do. And uh, my philosophy behind that is that if you're really trying to build this uh, leading company and you fly on the other side of the planet, you're not really going to be having someone holding your hand and translating stuff for you. You could, of course, fly with an interpreter. That's, of course, possible. One thing I saw in my country manager uh, work in, in, uh, with Angry Birds was that a lot of times I was uh, working between like a, a foreign CXO and a Japanese like a CEO or CXO. And uh, a lot of times I noticed that the trust that those both guys built was not towards each other, but to me. And I felt like well, what whichever Japanese company like uses me as an interface to the rest of the world, they're going to be dependent on me. And uh, uh, also like they, they're not able to directly access to it. So like I'm, I'm just trying to democratize and give them the power that all these people in the middle that uh, are like basically a profession I used to represent before uh, kind of uh, represent. So, so yeah, I'm kind of uh, trying to give uh, these world conquering skills to just anybody in, in the Japanese startup scene. Cool. Thanks for sharing uh, your vision for Takeoff Tokyo. And we'll dive into startup events now, but uh, I guess, could you give us like a general picture of uh, what actually happens at the startup event? Mm, I guess like maybe instead of like talking like just about events themselves, like maybe I'll start with like why why are those kind of needed? Um, I guess if you're starting something new, like it's there's a reason why it's new and why it's hard. It's it's um, many other people haven't done it before, so you need to find people who are interested in doing that. You need to find money, and uh, um, with the internet, you can Google a lot of this stuff. There's something still, even this in 2023, that in human interaction that you you meet something, you, someone you share a meal or share like a nice conversation, and then you um, become like motivated and interested in building something together. So I think events are great places to find um, uh, knowledge, people, or 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 also capital. Yeah, no, I would agree, and. Uh... So I think that kind of sets up the basis of what kind of activities goes on there. And I think uh, I advise to go to startup events and pitch uh, network, pitch sale. But uh, I'll just throw it out for the listeners who have never been to a startup event. It's uh, the type of events that you can, or kind of activities is uh, you usually have pitch contests where they'll invite uh, several judges who are usually uh, VCs, venture capitalists. Uh, you'll have maybe 10, sometimes 20. In crazy cases, you might have like 50 people pitching and usually uh, there's a winner. And uh, in some cases, like I think Takeoff Tokyo, what was the prize last year? Was so it one, we, one million, I think? We gave one million uh, yen yeah. in uh, cash to the winner, uh, Giga. Yeah, Giga, yeah. So that was, uh, that was really cool. So yeah, the, the money helps, but you know, just being able, like I think you mentioned, there's 40 VCs there, being able to pitch your company to 40 VCs as opposed to trying to cold call 40. It's kind of like also like uh, it's a it's a noisy world. So like and with the internet, all the information at this at, at your fingertips. Um, so you might be able to get like a quick snapshot of everything that is happening in the scene and uh, and kind of, uh, yes, you can Google uh, and uh, you can do like cold calls and cold emails and like try to build uh, a network through Twitter. Um, sometimes like face to face, it's just like so much faster. That's just one day and you can get all these contacts. So uh, yeah. yeah. Also networking, like, or at least in my case, I went there to meet uh, other startup founders. Uh, 
let's see, there's people who could be employees, programmers, UI, UX designers. Uh, one guy I met at Take Off Tokyo actually ended up becoming my client. So I was paid for the trip there. And uh, okay. excellent. So this is this is exactly exactly what <laughs> happened. Was, was able to get some free swag from Stripe. Mm -hmm. so that was kind of cool. Uh, you have yes. boots sometimes. Like, uh, I mean, I think having a booth can be uh, kind of interesting. Yeah, I think we can maybe just dive more in. I, I think we'll talk, but I, I'll just go through them. But you can, there's boots. Startups have their own boots. Uh, they have panel discussions. So mm -hmm. at the Hokkaido Innovation Week, I think in January 2024, I'll be joining a panel discussion on uh, getting more Japanese workers to use the latest tools and technology because I coach a lot of small businesses. And that is a big challenge to have uh, keynote speakers. And I think uh, they have speed dating between uh, startups and corporations who are looking for innovative ideas. But with that being said of what happens at a startup event, how is this, uh, why would attending a startup event be beneficial for a startup outside of just being able to pitch to VCs? Well, once you've started your company or like if, if you're, if you even haven't started your company, like you might be able to find someone help you get started, like either a co-founder or like first employee. There's a lot of people and they usually share your interests. So find a lot more people than you will find at home and uh, you can talk to them very directly. Um, so getting people to build whatever you want to build too, since there's a lot of investors there, somebody might be able to fund whatever you're dreaming to make investment is great there's also like um, depending on what business you're building you might be able to find your first customers there or like not even first but some customer it sounds like you certainly did which is great uh, uh happy to hear that there's also like uh typically um for example journalists are looking for a great stories to tell and uh they tend to go to these places where there's lots of like crea uh, critical mass so it will like it's more likely that they'll be able to write a good story so uh of course like startups can be at the benefiting end of that and uh for example get their story written about mm. uh, this is only for startups or like i could list the different kind of benefits for all other groups like yeah like, we'll, we'll dive into uh, that there's or students or media like it's uh, every every group has their own own uh, kind of merits and we'll, and we'll go one by one and uh yeah also i guess for startups in my case too like i, I was able to or uh i'll say i think it did kind of help but uh, three of my interns i were actually in volunteers at uh takeoff tokyo mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. very happy I, th I think next year that i go i'll actually be more uh I'll be more on the hunt for interns, actually, next okay. time I go. So you got a customer and uh, three clients, volunteer, uh, sorry, vol uh, interns volunteering. Okay, so it sounds like you've been make the most of it. Uh, you 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 actually should be telling others like how to use this. <laughs> yeah. It is like, uh, it seems like you you know your way around. Uh, it's, uh, so I, there were several journalists there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was going to add one more thing too. Like I thought there's also uh, there's more CTO level people than I expected. So like typically like a lot of these, it depends. Like there's other types of events. Like for example, I will also organize a hackathon called Builders Weekend. And uh, that's like a very technical crew. It's like a side event we do a little bit before um, takeoff. But uh, the, um, I think why there was... Uh, CTOs, uh, it's, yeah, I think a lot of early stage builders, you need to be a little bit of a businessman, a little bit of a builder. Uh, once it you it gets like into really large companies, I guess uh, maybe it gets a little bit more separated, but uh, but yeah, I'm, I think that's, that's just a good thing that there was also, you met a lot of good CTOs because uh, yeah, somebody needs to make that uh, world conquering product as well. Because I think I met uh, three, maybe later stage C CTOs who are foreigners in Japan. Oh yeah, and the, uh, the odds of even meeting one is pretty hard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but they, they came out. I'm I'm not sure which one you're talking about, but like maybe the Make Leaps uh, CTO. Uh, That's one of them. Yeah, yeah. He's he's I know him from like close to ten years now, and uh, he's been yeah. a fan of this kind of stuff, and. Uh, 
Yeah. Yeah, like uh, I, he's also organizes like this thing called uh, Hacker News Meetup, and uh, uh, oh, gotcha. he, yeah, he gave me a lot of advice on like one thing interesting thing he told me. Uh, he taught me about events um, uh, with his co-founder uh, Jay. One thing I learned about them is that uh, regularity is one of the most important things when you're building a community. Like if you need to check when something is happening, that in- decreases the likelihood that people are want to be a part of it. So mm. like they they like always stress that like regularity it it just happens always like once a month uh their hacker news meetup so i've used incorporated that uh life philosophy a lot in like a lot of my stuff as well like if you're able to be predictable then people and en- en- enjoy that but um uh, yeah there's a lot of, lot of great CTOs there and who also organize events fine host i also provide advisory and coaching services to business owners who want to 2x 5x and even 10x their business so stop holding your company and your team and your employees back and let me help you and your company scale find more information at scalingyourcompany.com now back to the episode it's like yours to increase leads and closing rates through SEO, Google Maps, content marketing, and websites that convert. Head over to scalingyourcompany.com and book a free consultation. Let's talk about what your business needs are, where your current strategy is letting you down, and how we can help you see real results with the methods I've successfully implemented at multiple companies myself. Now, back to the episode. And uh, so I guess what are the what are the benefits for a corporation? So depends on the corporations, but typically, like a lot of corporations, they're big, already successful, and they love, might have like some cash. One thing that they're typically looking for is uh, ideas and inspirations. Where should they go? And typically, like they have two choices: they either invest some into something internally, do like some new in- business development, start a new department, or then they either invest into like uh, new uh, projects or them uh, like just uh, become a customer of one of these uh, these projects or like some sort of a partner. So um, I think uh, corporates can learn from, they can get new ideas, new energy and uh, and uh, attitude from, uh, from startups. Um, so I think that's why, um, yeah, the, the corporate innovation space is like very active here in Japan as well. And I think you covered media. I think we get we get it for investors. So I guess uh, the next step would be uh, how can we I guess maximize event participation and get the most out of the event. The first uh, idea is like think of like why you want to go in the first place. Set some sort of like a concrete goal. Um, I guess in the like like at some point, especially if some people who are early, like going the first one or two times, it might feel like a fun exploration and uh, like uh, uh, that's as well. But like especially like uh, um, you could you could already do it from the beginning as well. Like try to have a clear goal and understand what you're after, um, and uh, and try to make the most of it. If you're if you really need to find uh, an investment round, then you should be. Uh, trying to find all the investors who are participating, trying to approach them or like be somehow network or um, in Japan, we have this concept of nemawashi, kind of like uh, somehow try to expand your network in the investor scene um, already beforehand. Uh, and like then what you can do is like, uh, because there's a large concentration of uh, uh, investors at in one place, you can uh, you can use it to to like close your funding round, for example. Um, if you want to be hiring, like maybe you should be going to talking to all the the uh, the people who look like they are looking for a job or like uh, kind of like soon to be graduating. Or maybe you should also like how to make the most is like I'd say like since there's a lot of people at these venues, like you have to be memorable uh so in one way or another you should make it make yourself uh so that people are not gonna I think G- G- giggle you. is very memorable yeah. yeah so like of course yeah laughter but like even like things like what color is nobody wearing for example and then you can have 100 percent of that uh 
colored uh, like T-shirts or, or shoes or whatever. So colors or like, uh, um, is there there's something else that makes you really, really stand out? If you're gonna, going to go to a place like this, you want maximum attention for whatever cause you are there with or for. And uh, like you want everybody, if you're there for hiring, you want everybody to, to be talking about your employment opportunities at your company or, or something like that and uh, do something that uh, really really makes makes the other participants uh, think and 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 laugh and i i guess i will share the giga example like uh i think he had like a huge check like it was like a a check or something like that but it was like yeah. uh, 90 centimeters wide like 60 centimeters tall like it was huge it stood up yeah yeah and so like he, like, what's that so, yeah yeah like so like uh i think he does well like he he always wears this purple uh, hoodie so one one like usually no one else is wearing anything purple so i think that's a genius move because he can own a hundred percent of purple and uh, then uh he always has that large check and uh <laughs> it's also kind of hard to forget that someone was carrying like a large piece of cardboard that looks like this kind of a uh, credit card or whatever i forget mm -hmm. what it is and then another prop he always has is those paper bank books and they're not oh, really yes. real paper bank books but it's kind of like he's making like a kind of like a joke about him then like it's 2023 and like people are still using paper and like uh, <laughs> uh so he's like the startup but then he suddenly has uh like a paper bank books there of course they don't they're not real but uh it's it makes everybody smile so he he does that really well i think and, and uh to be honest i can't even remember the names of the other startups <laughs> yeah this is the only startup i actually remember yeah it's very short <laughs> and like it's also like uh it's a play on the the me mega bank theme like mm -hmm. okay i'll be just giga bank then so like he definitely cool. knows how to stand out uh, any other tips for startups? Usually, like it's also like if you're part of some sort of a some crew or group or something. Like maybe you're going with some friends or like like-minded people. Like, for example, if you want to hunt down like the investors, like maybe you can put together like you're into, for example, health tech or or fintech or something. Maybe you can get band up with uh, some other startups who are in that uh, field and like try to like crash some sort of like uh, uh side event that is in that team or just set one one side event of yourself like all events have like official side events but actually there's nothing stopping you from like organizing just uh, whatever drink up or meet up on your own gorilla in anywhere like i do like official side events and unofficial side events like all the time as well um for example i i visited ivs this june uh, uh mm -hmm. because this uh, idea with a friend, like I think three days before the venue, uh, before the the thing, and and we book put together um, like a hundred person. Um, we booked a bar and bought, brought a hundred hundred people to this one bar in Kamogawa, and uh, people seemed quite happy with that. Uh, I might be doing something in Sapporo as well, like in at the end of uh, January. Let's see. I haven't made the concrete plans yet, but like, uh, like my, my mind uh, is already like wanting to go. So let's see, like, uh, hopefully I'll make it. Cool. But please, please uh, continue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, the kind of like, there's nothing stopping from you from like, uh, uh, somehow like, like building some of the contents like that on your yourself. And like, I welcome that as well with like my own events as well, or like, not that I welcome, it's kind of like, if they start using like our brand or our name or something like that, then it's it's a little bit of a different story. But like if there's like a people doing like fintech stuff, uh, like that's just that's just as cool. As long as it's adding to the event, not taking away yeah. from it. Yeah. And yeah, kind of like that too. I think from my end too, like uh, if I was like a startup trying to get fundraising, you can see who the speakers are. There's yeah. a lot of VCs there, and you can just make uh, your target list. Like mm -hmm. who's the list of people like that you want to meet that day mm -hmm. to make it worth going to the event. If you meet some interesting people, you can take, uh, if you take a picture with them, um, that might help you later, um, to get some stuff done. Yeah. You can tell people that, Hey, I met this person, but 
like did you really if you don't have a picture to show it so 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 like uh having some some sort of like i think the photos are the easiest form of documenting why not do that since since if it's it's going to be such an intense and exciting experience interesting i think three or four people requested photos with me actually so maybe i know maybe i now know who gave them that feedback <laughs> uh, cool and how about how can a event an investor so let's say it's more of a new investor maybe a junior invest was a junior level at a vc how and how could they uh, make the most of a event? Uh, VC. Well, I think it depends what kind of a VC, but like uh, a lot of VCs, like typically they have startups where they're investing into, and then they also have uh, limited partners whose money they are investing. One thing you could do is like try to find new startups to invest, or like you could find like new LPs to fundraise from, or then you could. Maybe there's already like someone who you've already invested into and you could like help them get more stuff done. Mm -hmm. You could be like the like a uh, spokesperson for, for, mm -hmm. for some of the companies you've uh, uh, been working with. Uh, yeah. Is there any, is there anything like, uh, cause I know at start of events, they have like an investor package, mm -hmm. but are there any unique benefits for the investor package versus like the general package? There's a lot of different investors, like uh, what they want. It's some of them are really looking for like sort. They want to do sourcing. They want to find new new uh, things to invest, and uh, and the other ones want to find their own LP investor. But like depending on what they want, usually what these kind of packages that you see, they're kind of like these uh, a bit averaged out, one size fits all kind of things. They try to. Everybody tries to, and like I also try to customize it always, of course, uh, to everybody. But like um, usually, you have things that, uh, yeah, that a large number of investors would like. For example, a large amount of intro investors typically enjoy if they can get the contact details. For example, to as many startups as they can, or or if they get invited to like meet a lot of their LP investors, or or like if. Or since there's a lot of VCs around, they're like they want to differentiate themselves from other VCs. Like, so if there's some way to um, for them to promote themselves, like in in some like online or offline media, like in the, you can do websites or or social media or or like even stuff on stage. I think those the investors are in, interested in all of that, and um, yeah, all of that's available. No, thanks for sharing that. Yeah, I guess me for corporations. So me, what, what are some potential benefits for them? Uh, I think we discussed it a little bit, but uh, the the kind of um, they can get uh, ideas and inspiration and and uh, like things that they wouldn't have figured out themselves. Corporations are usually like because of their size, they're not so fast always. So they can like catch up with the faster ones in the ecosystem and. Uh, um yeah they maybe they find some other longer term partners it could be like other large corporations or, or or startups as well not just like learning and getting inspired but like investing i can add some additional ways to uh so i guess i can go into my experience of how i maximize the event experience but uh okay. my case was i wanted to expand my amount of podcast listeners i did want to close maybe one or two clients and um, I'll say that was my main goal. And mm -hmm. so like I went there, uh, one thing I did was, uh, in my case, I was just telling the, uh, that I was your teammate that uh, if they need help with anything, like, you know, I'm available, I'm there. Uh, like, you know, I don't have a hardcore mission what to do. So just let me know and it worked out. I was able to do the panel discussion yeah, that's actually like what you brought up is like if you're like offered to be helpful, like then like you might get all kinds of interesting opportunities your way. Um, could be anything, but uh, but but yeah, uh, trying to help is always good. Yes, I think that was one strategy. Just uh, just telling them that you're available. That was mm -hmm. one strategy I used. Uh, and I think also just getting on the panel discussion. I realized that would have made it much easier to get actually i ended up getting two clients from that event actually okay i just remembered because one yeah. of them attend 
one of them attended my panel discussion and where I was the moderator or it's yeah. just two of us, but, uh, yeah. so, um, yeah, so I wanted to use that opportunity to show my expertise and, um, yeah, it ended up working out and, uh, nice. and through that, I was able to talk to a lot of people after that based yeah. on the panel discussion. Cause like usually when I do, um, uh, whenever I speak in public, I always pre plan to, I always come up with like one, one wow factor. Like what is one thing I can say that other people don't say or haven't realized yet. Mm -hmm. And if you just kind of plant that seed, then, uh, usually it makes it much easier to network with people. And a lot of times people will remember that one thing or one or two things, then that'll help stir up a follow-up conversation. And yeah, also, I think the other tactic I employed was, uh, I just, when I go up to people I'm like, Hey, like what would make this event? Oh, nice to meet you. My name is Tyson. Uh, I run scaling your company, but, uh, what's your name and what would make this event a success for you? And they explain their needs. Then after that, I can explain my need mm. like, uh, and so, uh, and then, That's you know, that's actually something I've heard from like some uh, some participants and like uh, some friends is is that uh, when they meet someone and somebody starts kind of directly uh, kind of uh, uh, introducing too aggressively what they're working on and trying to make 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 you buy or or register or do something like usually the better approach is kind of is started with more openly and like maybe try to listen and help a little bit first and then people are quite likely to uh somehow give back to you something so that's actually a good approach i think uh you do this stuff really well it's uh yep that's the whole point it's uh one it's and then whatever they say, it's like, yeah, I met this other guy. He might be interested. You see that guy, go talk to him. Mm -hmm. He might seem to be a match for like what you're selling. Oh, you're looking for VCs. Uh, what stage? Oh, I think these VCs are here. And it's kind of, uh, let's say, being an unofficial guide in a way. Yeah. Uh, if, if, if they're really cool, I'll make the introduction. But uh if I think it's, if I really, if I, or I know the other person and I know exactly what they want and I know if it's a fit, then I'll go ahead and make the intro. But then after that, it's easier for me just to say like, uh, oh, this is what I do. And, um, this is the type of clients I help. And, um, yeah, if you meet anyone else who's interested, or if you meet anyone else who would like to, uh, scale their company from maybe six figures to eight figures in dollars, I'm the guy to talk to. And like, I don't even need to push them. Like, you know, if you need, you need my service more, like if you know someone else and in a lot of cases, they'll be like, oh, actually that's kind of interesting. Like, uh, tell me more. Like, well, yeah. If, if like, if you become notorious for like whatever you're working on, uh, in, in your own niche, like people will come, come to you even, even without like knowing all the details and, and stuff like that. So. If you have this reputation of helping people out in that domain, like they're gonna ask for your help again, and they're gonna bring your friend, their friends too. This and this kind of a tactic I'll probably use more next time. But uh, actually, I think fifteen people approached me at Takeoff Tokyo and like, oh, I love the podcast. Oh yeah. And I was like, uh, for me, did that was like, did they recognize your face or like, people actually did? And like, uh, I found out that. Uh, because I think of what's I think because there's about 800 or I think there's about 500 people each day. Mm -hmm. I think word spread out pretty easily. And like yeah. some people were telling me, yeah, I heard, like I heard from these guys that you're here today. Yeah. yeah. And like by the end of the day, like I just heard that like five times already. Like, oh, cool. Yeah. No. Yeah. This is exactly like how, how it can turn out in the best case, case scenario. Um, Really, really nice hearing this out loud. Uh, gives me like food for thought, like what can be, what should be done the same and what can be done better next time. But like for a big event, if it's like, you know, 5,000, 10,000 people, you're not going to get those type of network effects. Mm -hmm. But I think if there's like a thousand or 2,000 people, if it's spread out for a week, I yeah. can take advantage of network effects and basically getting people to network on your behalf. Yeah. It's kind of, uh, with larger, the larger the event becomes like the kind of 
the technology, how it's organized and how everyone, people are scheduled and, and match made to, to meet each other, like that becomes more and more I- I- important. So, so like a very, like, a, uh, um, yeah, the, the kind of threshold goes a lot higher with the, the number. The difficulty level goes um, higher the bigger the event is. And there's actually, I've heard from a lot of, not everybody has like, ah, oh, this is too big or some, this is too small or something. But um, there are some groups who have like a, a favorite number that, for example, you shouldn't go beyond, I don't know, a few hundred or a few thousand or whatever oh. number. But uh, some, it, it's a matter of taste uh, as, as well for some people. Yeah, I haven't attended a large one yet for, I mean, because I, I know I wouldn't get these network effects. Uh, but uh, what I was thinking, if I were to attend like a bigger event, like uh, where there's definitely going to be like two to three thousand people on a day, or five thousand, ten thousand, uh-huh. is uh, I'll probably do research in advance, like who yeah. who's my sniper list and uh, people I meet there. Is like, hey, have you seen this person? Show them the photo, and like I'll be more like a sniper. Whereas uh, yeah. when I went to a smaller events, I'm more of like a shotgun. Yeah. yeah, that's true. You need to pick your battles in bigger events a lot. More. Thank you for listening to this episode of Scaling Japan. In addition to serving as your fine host, I also provide advisory and coaching services to business owners who want to 2x, 5x, and even 10x their business. So stop holding your company and your team and your employees back and let me help you and your company scale. Find more information at scalingyourcompany.com. Now back to the episode. But yeah, I guess leading up, we kind of dived into like huge events and whatnot. But uh, I guess in your thoughts, like what are some of the major events in Japan for startups? Uh, I mean, there's like a lot of lot of different things uh, happening around uh, down the country. Um, I, I feel like during Corona, uh, the scene got a uh, little bit more domestic, uh, partly because like you couldn't enter, come in through the border and like after the restrictions were taken, like it became slowly a bit international again. But um, yeah, I mean, uh, there's the, like a, a, the handful of like a few VCs who have their own kind of, uh, kind of gashuku, like uh, offsite uh, style uh stay over events uh uh at like always a different city ar- around japan and uh then you have like a few very active uh local governments who are doing their own things there used to be also like before corona i used to see like more of these kind of independent uh organizations uh uh that don't exist anymore for example TechCrunch and uh and uh uh tech in asia they were like uh tech in asia right yeah yeah those were those were like uh, independent like media organizations organizing events also the bridge also used to organize but i'd say like uh maybe that's one way how the scene has kind of changed that it used to be like also media organizations used to organize more there's some media organizations who organized recently but uh i'd say it's like a, a handful of uh like vcs doing their offsite style events and then some local governments all over Japan um, doing their things. Uh, the unique operation model of uh, Take Off Tokyo, what we have that kind of stands out from everybody else is that uh, we have a hundred person, a uh, hundred student volunteer team. Uh, we are building these uh, next generation uh, business builders. Um, uh, so we're we're basically trying to raise uh, a generation of entrepreneurs and uh, uh, how that's different from uh, what everyone else is doing is like uh, a lot of, for example, if you have uh, uh, bureaucrats or politicians uh, and consulting companies, for example, building stuff. And uh, then you have, uh, for example, people who are actually aspiring to be founders in the future, the kind of services or the experience you're able to build uh to founders is uh, is uh, a lot different then there's also like uh 
uh, I was talking about how there's uh, also the the VC hosted um, uh, event types. Uh, those are uh, usually, I'd, I'd say, like those are usually a little bit uh, 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 closer to what the startups are looking for themselves. Um, they tend to a uh, little bit uh, lean towards uh, the kind of um, uh, financial interest of, of, of the kind of uh, organizing investors sometimes but uh, but uh, but yeah I think there's all kinds of uh, uh, different models and uh, uh, that's that makes makes the system good all, all in all uh, our unique focus is to uh, raise this uh, next generation of, of, of world conquering founders cool yeah and I think that's uh pretty good summary of uh the types of events and who runs it uh i think now there's more i think some cities or tokyo tokyo is trying to get involved now uh, hokkaido is trying to get involved now and uh i did want to mention one small one i think uh, i think cic mm -hmm. has like a weekly event mm -hmm. As I did check out their website, CIC so, Tokyo, I think. I think what, what those guys do well is that they do the same regularity thing that uh, ah. I'd say like they have this Thursday meetup. So I think the regularity part is uh, the same thing that, for example, um, the Hacker News meetup does. So you don't have to think. You can just go. You know that every Thursday there is uh, something like that. Um I actually, like uh, me and a few other people, we started something similar in uh, Shibuya. There's this Wednesday uh, weekly brunch, startup brunch happening. And uh, that's also like for the same regularity principle. So you don't, don't have, you can eliminate the stress like, oh, when is it again? Where is it again? Like uh -huh. time is the same every week. So, or like it doesn't have to be, it could be even like the once a month or once a year, but like regularity makes it a lot easier for people. Cool. And I guess probably the last topic I want to talk about is uh, pay more of the financial aspects of a startup events. Like, you know, what is the cost for like maybe the startup side or like the cost for to set up a booth, uh, maybe to sponsor an event. But could you tell us more about the financial aspects? So, like, uh, first of all, like events themselves, like uh, they are like, uh, if someone is thinking of uh, starting their own thing, uh, uh, that's great. I want to tell you that uh, the finances are insane. Uh, sometimes uh, the, there's a lot of budget you commit beforehand. And a lot of times you get paid, uh, like, for example, whoever funds you, like, might pay you later. Of course, there's different kind of models. For example, some people might be operating, there's already a company has already paid everything in advance or some sort of government organization has already paid everything. But typically, for example, when I was in the game industry, if it looks like we needed more time and we were going to be late, we we're like, okay, let's just postpone the launch with one week. However, if you, the things with events is that if an event actually is a uh, a kind of it's a place that is restricted by time it's only available in that window and what happens that if you can't change the time because people have airplanes they 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 like the venue is already booked at other dates your production companies are elsewhere so because of that um there's just no way uh, like you move around like uh the, the for example the timing of an event so uh you can do in software you just postpone and like you pay a little bit of extra running cost another interesting thing is like once the event is done uh most of the things you can sell are actually gone uh, uh so like you should like if you when you manage your budgets the it's you you need to be very careful because like if you over budget it and and like don't sell enough you're gonna be screwed after the event because there you have nothing left to sell uh, of course, you can sell consulting services and all kinds of other things, but that's one thing that happens uh, with events in general. It, it's same also like for the, the participants also, like a lot of their investment on the ticket or if they're having a booth or something like that, uh, they can make most of that out during the event. It depends a bit on the organizer though. For example, I have this policy, like if there's some person who is like very, very... Um, I thought that they really overpaid or sometimes like they didn't get what they needed. I sometimes might follow up uh, with some like uh, 
delivering something extra at uh, after events, but uh, in some other way. But it's the first thing is that uh, it's a tough about, business. It's a very yeah. Very it's kind of like it's you you need to make the most of the moment because then it's gone. Uh, like and that's same for the organizer, but also the participants. I want to ask if you know, but like you know, like maybe the bigger events. You know how much does it typically cost for a startup to set up a booth or? I mean, like for startup booths, I, I've seen like events that have free booths, but then there's like some that are from a few thousand yen to a few a few uh, tens of thousands of yen and then like uh, hundreds of thousands of yen. I've seen over a million for like uh, corporations, but I, I don't think I can. I've seen like uh, for something for early stage startups that is over a million of yen, but depends quite a lot uh it's usually for early stage startups the booth is like not that expensive but uh, still like you should just make sure that what you want is is what you're gonna get if you're like getting something bigger then then you definitely it's a good idea to do a lot of yeah i think if you have kind of a general solution i think it's uh it can make sense i mean if you have a niche solution probably better just to do it at a trade show like I think like Giga's case, like, you know, they pretty much apply to all companies. I think actually a lot of the solutions that uh, the booths I saw at take off Tokyo, a lot of them were a uh, general. Yeah. You should know your audience and like know who is going to be there. Like if only 5% of people in the room are going to be benefiting from what you're showing, like it, maybe there's a better place where you could show, but uh, it depends. Like, uh, I guess the Giga's product can be used by everybody. But then there's also the investment aspect. Even if you have a niche product and you don't have any nobody who is going to use it, but then if if every investor wants to invest in you, that's also like because the investors are also like going to be walking by. So yeah, it depends. Or like if it, even if you're like uninvestable and like your nobody wants to be your customer, but you can somehow large like attract like a large uh group of like potential employees somehow at the booth that could work out as well but everybody should figure it out themselves like uh, have a goal and then like make it happen cool and i'll, I'll share one thing too and uh i promise i wasn't paid by auntie to mention this but uh i would say before the takeoff tokyo event uh or I, I look at the, my finances very carefully and uh i've probably given stripe about was a 500,000 yen, probably. They've, they've taken in fees from me. I was thinking of completely just like stop paying Stripe, but uh, and then kind of like a negative opinion site. But I went to the event, the team was really friendly, hooked me up with swag, and I didn't quit in 2023 because of my experience beating you at Takeoff Tokyo. Okay. And so, so you've probably made an extra uh, two hundred thousand yen just just from me. Okay, <laughs> okay, that's exciting. But, so, and I wasn't paid to say this, but uh, okay. uh, your your staff who went there they treated me very well, and uh, let's say that's please excellent. give them my praise. I'm I'm sure the the stripe folks will be happy to hear that. And uh, so you you, yeah, you can say go listen or Mari go listen to this part. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I would definitely do that. And uh, I was and any listeners too like uh now now that I talked to uh, Auntie like how well I did at Take Off Tokyo, I'm I was like seventy percent, probably ninety percent sure I'm gonna go this year. <laughs> Yeah, if, if I got two it's, clients it's, from it, it's it's actually really really funny to hear all these stories and how it went, and I'm so happy to hear all these stories. Like, if there's anyone who's listening and like has interesting stories to share, uh, share, or even like uh, improvement ideas or anything, like uh, uh, we're now planning for the next one, and we'd love to get all of your ideas. Uh, so, like, don't be a stranger. Reach out to me on uh, your favorite social media. You can find me on all of them um yeah i i love this kind of discussion awesome so thank you very much for today and uh sharing your knowledge about startup events in japan yeah thanks for having me and uh and uh looking forward to seeing you at the next one